Rituals meant to invoke spirits or the supernatural are participated by pretty much anyone who has ever had a childhood. The most well known, such as Bloody Mary, have a strong element of danger, allowing kids to test the limits of their courage without the threat of actual injury. But what if the rituals actually worked? In Japanese culture, there are many such rituals that are thought to hold actual supernatural power, enough so that those describing them online or by word of mouth often caution strongly against doing them. But you're not superstitious, right? Surely knowing just how these rituals are performed can bring you no harm, and if curiosity compels you to try one, we're sure you'll be completely safe. So today, we're going over 10 Japanese rituals that might scare you to death. The Bath Game Also known as Daruma-san, the bath game is distinctly not for the faint of heart. This ritual must be done in a bathtub, not a shower, right before going to bed. The player must fill the tub, then turn off the lights. Sit in the middle of the tub, in the dark, facing the faucet. The player must wash his or her hair while repeating the words Daruma-san fell down until the hair washing is complete. During this time, you must keep your eyes closed. It is said that if you are doing this properly, the image of a Japanese woman falling in the tub and gouging out her right eye on the faucet will enter your mind and that you may then feel movement or a presence in the tub behind you. Whatever you do, you must not open your eyes, but ask the question, why did you fall in the bath? Carefully exit the tub and, leaving everything in the bathroom just as it is, shut the door. It is now safe to open your eyes, and you must then go to sleep, for the game begins the next morning. As you go about your day, the ghostly one-eyed woman will follow you everywhere you go. She will attempt to not be seen while closing the distance between you. You must not let her catch you. If she gets too close, and you are able to catch her in your sight, shouting, Tomare, will slow her down. Use this command sparingly, for it will slow her down less every time you do so. To end the game, you must shout, Kita, which means, I cut you loose, while making a chopping motion with your arm. The game will then be over. But if she suspects you are attempting to end the game, she will become even harder to spot. They say that those who lose this game do not live to explain what happens. And also, one final note. If you do happen to play and win, do not ever play again. If you do, the ghost will start the game from the position she was in last time, which is likely to be right behind you. White Kimono To play, you must lay on your bed between the hours of 2 a.m. and 3 a.m. Stare at the north corner of your ceiling, then slowly Shift your gaze to each of the four corners of your ceiling one by one, going counterclockwise three times. Cross your arms over your chest and repeat the chant, Onbero kya moshiro ni sowaka, three times. Then, imagine a woman with long black hair and a white kimono, covered in blood. Imagine her creeping towards you, coming closer and closer. Then, 
When you're picturing her in front of you, stop visualizing. Uncross your arms, turn off all the lights in the room, and go to sleep, if you can. The woman you imagined will appear in your dreams. There are no instructions as to what is supposed to happen, only a short list of things not to do. Do not speak to her. She may ask your name. Do not tell her. If she tries to whisper in your right ear, do not let her. Shaking your right hand should wake you up. When you do wake up, examine the corners of your ceiling. If they look normal, no blotches or shadows, then you are safe. If they don't, well, we told you this might be risky. Fortune Game The game of Tushiora, or the Fortune Game, is one that may have real-world implications, as players must find a crossroads in full dark and talk to people that pass by. Now, we suggest you play this game in small groups, as this could be dangerous for purely non-supernatural reasons. To play, players must bring a comb and must have something to cover their face. When you have arrived at the crossroads, run your fingers through the comb and make a sound and repeat this phrase. Tushiora, Tushiora, grant me a true response. Three times. Then, simply wait for a stranger to appear. It must be not anyone known by any of the players in the group. Each player must cover their face and then ask the stranger to grant their fortune. If they refuse, uncover your face and wait for someone else. It is said that whomever answers must do so truthfully. But be warned, this ritual is based on an ancient legend, which state that powerful demons and spirits lurk at the crossroads in the middle of the night, so there's no real way of knowing who you're speaking or asking your fortune from, or whether the answer, however truthful, will be one that you want to hear. The Elevator Game The Elevator Game has a unique objective. It's also known as Another World because it is your goal to reach one. To get there, you'll need a building with an elevator and at least 10 floors. That's all. First, you must get into an empty elevator, alone, on the first floor. Go to these floors in this order. 4th, 2nd, 6th, 2nd, 10th. If anyone gets into the elevator with you, you must start over. Being alone the entire time is necessary for the ritual to work. Once you've gotten to the 10th floor alone, go to the 5th floor, and there, a woman will get into the elevator with you. You must not speak to her. She's not actually a human being, so it would do you little good anyway. Press the button for the first floor, but the elevator won't go down. Instead, it will return to the 10th floor, and if you reach the 10th floor without pushing another button, there is no going back. The doors will open, and you'll be in a dark, shadowy version of the real world. You'll be the only one there, but some say you might still be able to interact with the real world if you have an electronic device. However, there is some disagreement upon whether or not they work in the alternate world. To get back, you must perform the ritual in reverse. But those who claim to have successfully accomplished this say it was not easy. It is said that it's easy to become lost, you may have trouble finding the elevator again, or you may even have trouble approaching the elevator, as it will appear to recede further into the distance if you try to come close. It is also said that even if you are able to return to the elevator and successfully do the ritual in reverse, it may not work. Satoru-kun Satoru-kun is another game meant to gain the answers to questions by invoking spirits. All you will need is your mobile phone and enough change for a payphone, which you also must track down. Insert the coins, then call your own mobile phone from the payphone. As your phone is ringing, repeat this chant. Satoru-kun, 
Satoru kun, please come here. Satoru Satoru, please show yourself. Satoru Satoru, please answer me if you are there. Then, hang up the payphone. If you've done this correctly, within 24 hours you'll receive a call from Satoru kun, the spirit you have just invoked. He will call several times, and each time he will tell you where he is, and he will be a little closer to your location with every call. The last time he calls, he will tell you he is behind you, and that is when you must ask your question with all due haste. If you turn around, look at him, try to touch him, or delay in the slightest when asking your question, well, you will be dragged down to hell. Phantom of the Answer Another game for only the most desperate of truth seekers. Phantom of the Answer, or simply The Answer Man, is another game that must be played with mobile phones, 10 of them to be exact, with 10 willing players. And while the answer man will indeed give a answer to any question you ask, they say that he will often have a question for you. And if you are for whatever reason unable to answer, there will be consequences. To play, the players must disable call waiting, have everyone stand in a circle and simultaneously call the person to their left. All the lines will be busy except for one, which will be picked up by the answer man. The spirit is said to be that of a boy with no arms or legs, who is still attempting to collect body parts to complete himself from beyond the grave. Therefore, if you're unable to answer the phantom man's question, after he's answered yours, you will feel a tingle in some of your body, and according to legend, will subsequently lose the body part to an accident or illness in short order. Some versions of the legend say that the phantom won't even wait that long. A gnarled hand will come out of your phone and grab a limb and just take it right then and there. To end the game, just tell the phantom that you have to go, but he'll be reluctant to let you go and may offer free information in return. This will be a trap and you'll be made to answer a very, very difficult question if you stay on the line. Also, the phone must be destroyed after the game's over, or you may receive a call back, or find that your phone is now a hotline to the spirit world. The Red Man Another summoning ritual the Red Man game is notable for one reason. The sources that describe the ritual don't say what the object of the game is. But if you'd like to summon the Red Man, whoever that may be, for some purpose which you won't know, then you're probably the risk-taking type and perhaps this game is for you. The ritual requires a doll, this time a simple paper cutout, and is rather elaborate. Aside from the doll and the scissors used to cut it out, which you'll need later, you must also have on hand red lipstick, two mirrors, a lighter or matches, and five candles. The game must be played at night or in total darkness, as no daylight can enter the mirrors. First, using the lipstick, draw a line at the back of your paper doll. Then, use it to write your full name on one side of the line and the word rubius, Latin for red, on the other. Place the mirrors facing each other with a small gap in between. Then draw two red eyes with a lipstick in the center of the top half of the mirror on your left. Place your paper doll face down, with the writing facing up, between the two mirrors. Position the candles around the doll at the clock face positions of 12, 2, 5, 7, and 10 in that order. Then light them in the following order. 7, 12, 5, 10, and 2. Cut the paper man in half down the middle, then push each half slightly towards the mirror closest to it, and repeat this phrase six times. Please come, please come. I will not move until you do. 
If you've done everything correctly, the Red Man should appear. But once again, nobody knows who he is or what he will want when he arrives. If you happen to successfully summon him, perhaps you could let us know. If you get the chance. Have you got the ability to see this ghost? This game by Japanese blogger Seiya is supposedly a test for psychic ability, and you can do it right now. But there's a twist. If you choose to do it right now, you may be sorry, but we can't tell you the twist until you already have. Are you ready? Alright, close your eyes and picture your childhood home. If you can't picture it accurately enough, you may use any place you lived. Picture yourself standing in your room. Then, leave your room and slowly visit each room in your house. When you've finished, return to your room and open your eyes. Finished? Great. Now, now, did you see anything while you were taking your imaginary tour? Anything or anyone that was in the house with you? If not, say asserts that you have no psychic ability. If you saw friends or family members, then you do have some psychic ability. But if you saw strangers, people you know to be deceased or vague non-human shapes, then you may be in serious trouble. According to the post, this is not exactly just a test. Those are actual goats you just saw, and performing this test made you susceptible to seeing them in the future. If you happen to see non-human things swirling in the mist, shadows or animals, then you are in contact with supernatural entities and could actually be in quite a bit of danger. So, how do you do on the test? Kakuri-san A slightly less terrifying game, Kakuri-san is Japan's answer to the Ouija board a well-established Western ritual that is said to be very dangerous, opening the user up to manipulation by evil spirits or even possession. While Ouija has the potential to summon a wide variety of entities from the friendly to the malevolent, Kokuri-san is said to be much safer because one specific spirit is being invoked, Kokuri, a Shinto trickster god. Playing the game is functionally near identical to Ouija, with a few minor differences, such as the substitution of a red coin for the pointer, the necessity of an open window so the spirit may enter, and the requirement to invoke the spirit by name. Once Kokura arrives, he will answer any question, so just make sure that you don't ask any questions that you may not really want to know the answer to. Also, keep in mind that as a trickster spirit, Kokuri's answers may be deceptive or not tell the whole story. As the most popular ritual of this sort in Japan, Kokuri-san has been responsible for a number of panics and even media hysterias. Many schools have banned the game, which probably has done very little to keep curious students from continuing the play. Hide and seek alone also known as One Man Hide and Seek, or One Man Tag. This ritual is said to be far more dangerous than it sounds. Don't let the alone part throw you off. The game involves summoning spirits which may be unfriendly, and it is rumored to be extremely hazardous to anyone brave enough to attempt it. A few things are needed. A humanoid doll, some uncooked rice, some crimson thread, a cup of salt water, a sharp knife, and your own fresh fingernail clippings. To play the game, you must remove all of the stuffing from the doll, replacing it with the rice, which is said to attract spirits, and the fingernail clippings which binds the doll to the player. The doll must be then sewn up with the crimson thread. Next, choose a hiding place and make sure the cup of salt water is there. 
This is absolutely critical. Fill the bathtub with water, then choose a name for your dog. At 3 a.m., the fun is ready to begin. Take the doll to the bathroom and tell it three times that you are the first it. Place the doll in the bathtub and take your knife with you to your hiding place. While you are on your way, it is crucial that you do not look behind you. Also, that you turn off any lights on the way, but turn on the TV. Make sure that it is to a blank channel showing nothing but static. Once you've made it to your hiding place, you must close your eyes and count to ten. Then return to the bathroom with knife in hand and tell the doll by name that you have found it. Remove it from the bathtub, stab it with the knife, and tell the doll three times that he or she is now it, by name. Put the doll and the knife back in the tub, and quickly return to your hiding place. Once again, don't look behind you. At this point, things may happen. You may hear the doll looking for you, and, if it is close, the sound of the TV's static may change. If you feel the doll is about to find you, you must quickly end the game, or you could be in mortal danger. To do this, take a drink of the salt water into your mouth without swallowing. Leave your hiding place, but keep the salt water in your mouth, no matter what. When you find the doll, or it finds you, you must pour the rest of the salt water on it. Spit the water in your mouth over it as well, and then say, I win, three times, and cut the crimson thread. This will release the trapped spirit that you conjured. Just make sure to burn the doll after it is dried.